big danger Hefe. So, yeah, that 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 kind of it's it sums up what we've been saying. Jon Snow's just not really been a presence this year compared to in previous years. Well, he has to take on this Terran player in the Northeast as we load into Pillars of Gold. He is representing Alpha X Future. Bottom left hand side, let's see what he's got for us. It's Jon Snow. A hatch first out of the Zerg player. I think uh, thoughts on this map generally going to be a bit rougher if the Terran player cannot do damage early on because you want to. The third bases on this map are pretty open. So if you're a Zerg that likes to do counterattacks, run bys and whatnot, this map's got to be one of your favorites. Um, and there's not really, I think, too much else that I really write home about on this one. Terrans will try to sometimes do two base pushes with the high ground outside the low ground third, or they try to cut the natural off of the third uh, with that cliff area below the main. So we've seen quite a few different places where Terrans can do earlier tank attacks. The past that point, map gets real wide open. So I am curious as to how Future will play this one. I do not have a very good memory of this map when it comes to TVZ as far as Terran's winning go. It's one of those where you got to get your punches in quick uh, if you're playing this one versus Zerg. Yeah, even sometimes I, I quite like the eight racks on this map, right? Because yeah. it's just like nice, quick, you get across. If you let the Zerg go late, it's a real battle to hold five bases. And then you you basically have to mine out one side for the fifth base. Like say you take, in this case, the right side fifth base as, as future. Then you mine that out and then you go to the top left and you mine that out. You play a long game basically and you kind of let the Zerg run into you a lot. So yeah, I'm with you. You got to kind of, you know, hit quick and, then, you know, quick and hard. Otherwise you're probably going to have to play like really, really slow. Yeah. That's the, that's the biggest thing about this one. You know, for for as much as I've tried to analyze this map over, like, the couple seasons that we've had it, I always get, like, the, the bias comments. I'm like, no, if you watch if you watch these games, it's it's very hard if you take this long against Zerg because there's just a lot of different angles that you can hit on some of those expansions. So that's why I like what you're talking about. Big attacks, eight racks type plays, maybe big Hellbat push, something to knock the Zerg off kilter a little bit so that you can kind of follow up for that quick one-two punch, which is something that... Terran is very good at, and we've seen a bit of variety in the way that, uh, at least at the highest level, this matchup's been played a bit. I am going to keep uh, gushing over the some of the TY, like the mind drops and all of that stuff. Like, we've had people doing those armory mind builds, and those actually synergize well with Hellions because you usually build those against Zerg, and they're never really bad to have. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any scenario where you're unhappy to have Hellions in a TVZ early on. Like, yeah, you can get Roach Rush, sure. But if you're scouting, like even Hellions with a good SCV pull and a wall off or something can hold off a lot of different types of attacks, but it gives you that ability to put pressure on the Zerg. And that's so, so, so important if you want to do, for example, that tank attack. Yep, pressure, pressure, pressure. Keep back the creep spread as much as possible. Yeah, Hell Hellions are just the fantastic unit early and they're always such a threat, right? Because at any moment, you mess up your defense as Jon Snow and boom, Hellions in your mineral line. Uh, what mineral line, basically? You know, you have nothing left at that point. Exactly, exactly. Turns into a drone barbecue. You find yourself saying, well, this was definitely more of a trick than it was a treat, Wordy. <laughs> oh, the Halloween rap. <laughs> You're going to have so much fun tomorrow, Nate. I, I, can already, I can already tell. Yes, yes, yes. As it will be a... a uh, an actual real holiday. I will have full, full control over the over the memes. I'm very excited <laughs> for it. I'm very excited for it. You guys don't have that over there, right? People don't come to your house begging for candy every day. Yep, that's the thing. Halloween. Oh, oh, nice. Wait, also, not every not every day, but most. Glad to have Halloween assimilated night. your culture with ours. Yeah, it's not as big of a thing in England. Like I think it's more of like a a student slash kid thing, like a, a, mm. a reason to go out and dress up and party. And also a reason for kids to go get sweets, basically. But it is a thing. I, I love it because it's, uh, you know, even if it spreads everywhere, it's a holiday that everybody can be nice to each other on, is the is the hope, you know? It's a good, positive but, one. But, what but if you know what isn't sometimes, of treats. though? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the trick like is this, the nightest like worm popping up yeah. behind you. You know, you open the front door and you're <laughs> like, oh, there's a kid hoping for some candy. And then you hear, Burr! in the back door and you're like, oh! <laughs> You know, that's how they get you. Full of zerglings and you're dead. 
<laughs> they send the cute little drone to the front of his little pumpkin basket like, oh, can I have some minerals? <laughs> and then the night just pops up and all the roads just run in. <laughs> Oh, oh, dear. See, can, we can make anything related. We can make anything relevant to StarCraft. The, the sky is the limit. This and I just ain't going up. <laughs> and we shut it down. So, well, where do we go from here? There's a lot of lings. <laughs> There's no mining in no the main. No main ling nest. No evo yeah. chambers. No spire. Yeah, it's I just, mean, it's just a, a lot of marines and a warlock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is uh, this ain't gonna end well, unfortunately for uh, for Jon Snow. I like that he tries something different. But I actually think, like I said, going in, I, I give Future the edge. I predict him to go two zero right. So if I predict that, and I'm kind of on point, then I kind of expect Jon Snow to need to be aggressive to not play the longer game. This is horrible. He's on thirty drones. The Liberator has denied so much mining on top of the drones he's killed. Uh, I mean, all he has to show oh, oh, using the worm to block the third landing. That's cute. That's cute. I, I don't think, is this, the lings, oh my, it's like watching campaign. Okay. Well, the queens will come out and transfuse, but half the lings already died, so there's nothing <laughs> to support. <laughs> okay, GG. Let's go to game two. You know, you know what? I, I think Jon Snow was just trying to recreate our awesome intro that we have for the DreamHack stream here. I think he was just trying to get that. Now he's popping up. Why did he get lings speed, flooded into man. the arena fight. Oh, <laughs> you're right. He got lings speed. <laughs> Oh, There's dear. no campaign video. There's no campaign video in StarCraft that exists anywhere where Zerglings have speed. Even if you play the campaign on Brutal, they'll never give the Lings speed because that's just too that's too much. It's too much for any gamer. Amazing first game, Nate. I, I feel uh, like once again, we have brought the bands to a series that needed it a little bit. Oh, at least a game that needed it a little bit because that game was just kind of brutal. Future controlled it. Even some of the early Hellion Reaper play got so many lings. Just like the first mm. two Hellions of Reaper, like they found like six lings and then they got away with no damage taken. It's like, wow, like that's kind of crazy. You know, that's um, that's kind of good damage. And then obviously Jon Snow tries to be aggressive off that lair. Does not work. And uh, I guess Future's not the kind of kind of guy to answer his door to kids on Halloween, huh? No, apparently not. Or if he does it, he leaves a siege tank at his back door, uh, which which will which will do the trick for you. Uh, but light shade is going to be the next map. Hey, we don't really have to talk about the maps if the game are this short. There's no, there's not <laughs> even there's only so many opportunities to use hey, the features of it, look, right? The map don't matter if you just nidus across the map, right? Like you know, can you nidus on light shade? Yes. Is there somewhere to put a nidus worm? Sure. Of course there is. Yeah. Well, there's. It is it is the season, right? to steal a phrase from from the next holiday and then we'll say that the nidus worm is just the chimney trying to open up uh yeah <laughs> that's really scraping the bottom of the barrel here guys thank you for watching thanks for hanging out that's, that's we go and, and game don't, you, two. don't you guys worry nate's back tomorrow so you're yeah, loving this yeah yeah well, hopefully tomorrow it's a little bit more competitive in some of the games uh, so, you know it, it's brutal this, that was a brutal first map it, it was a brutal first map, but I really feel like I really feel like Jon Snow can put up a better fight. This is very much so a build that got figured out, right, as well. So yeah, people don't do future, that anymore. Yeah, exactly. Future just shuts it down, and even if Jon Snow like tries to play a macro game, I think he can make it pretty close, even if he's not as good as Future and he ends up losing. So I hope we get to see a bit of macro on the top left. This guy definitely wanted a macro. It's our blue Terran Future. And his opponent in the bottom right, bringing those tricks. He is Cystorm Gaming's Jon Snow. No. But yeah, all, all jokes aside, you are you are very right on that. I mean, there's a world where you don't get that faster tank, right? When you're doing this type of build as future, and you end up getting cough car like when a Nidus Network's building as you're getting two engineering bays, it does say a lot about the way that the game could go. And if you don't spot mm -hmm. it. If it is just a couple of Marines or if he builds like eight Hellions and has, uh, you know, like a, tries to build a reactor for his barracks using the factory instead of getting a safety tank, then obviously the whole story gets, the whole script gets flipped on its head. 40 Lings spill into the main base. Those Marines die. Maybe Stim or something gets canceled. Some add-ons get destroyed. The SCVs get forfeited. And then we're talking about, wow, what a great timing by Jon Snow to hit and get all this done. But Future has just been on top of that. And like you said, we went through an era where 
every single person who plays Terran, and I, I think I can say this conclusively, including everybody watching chat who's only played five games in the last three years, you have at least of those five games, probably two or three of them you got Nidus because there, there was that period of time where it was like literally every other game. People were going crazy with the Nidus worms. People were going wild and as much get figured out, it also got patched which took a lot of the strength out of it because the units would come out a lot faster. The Nidus Worms were unkillable while they were uh, morphing, or even when they had six armor, they were still unkillable, right? So it's uh, it's a build that got figured out. It's a build that's weaker than it used to be. So I don't mind throwing it in as a curveball, but maybe for a best of five, not a best of three, because now yeah. the uh, you know the guillotine is hanging above your head off the back of a pretty aggressive build that's generally not the most recommended one to do anymore. No, you're exactly right. I, I, I would have preferred like the first game to be normal and then maybe if it doesn't work you're like right time yeah. to time to go on. Oh if he two. had if Jon Snow had won game one and then tried to knight us to finish the series off in game two, I would I would say that, you know, I would be like, Oh, this makes this makes tremendous yeah. sense, right? Like of course. Um but hey, you solid control so far at the start here. Reaper has uh, beaten up a couple of drones, but no kills for the Reaper at all. And already, nice stable start for, for the Psystorm Zerg player as his third hatchery is also underway. So the Reaper did not deny the third. The Reaper did not kill any Lings. The Reaper did not kill any drones. So at the end of the day, the start of this game, got to be feeling pretty nice for Jon Snow. And uh, that makes me feel a little bit more confident in him because I feel like if you got tilted off that game one, you probably lose a drone or some Lings to this Reaper. I love, by the way, that Jon Snow is just like, you know what, I'm not going to wear my team hoodie. But I will place it on the bed behind me, just just to wrap the team. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hot here, man. But he's, he's, doesn't it look like he's wearing a jacket? There's like yeah, a I know. he's on like that, right? so I gotta look freaking good for stream. I'm not wearing any of this gamer wear. But I do appreciate you, the support of Psystorm Gaming, so you guys can yeah. be on when my bed. When you gotta play e EPT at six, but your date for your hot date thirty. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just did my hat. I can't change out of a hoodie after this. So are, you, are you crazy? The amount of static? If I pull that cotton <laughs> over my hair? Do you see this luscious mane? <laughs> no, I completely understand. I completely agree with him. That's. I actually only uh, put on and remove shirts by ripping them open or sewing them together in front of me so that they never mess with my hair. Fun fact, Wardy. That's, that's how I keep the locks as luscious I, as I they mean, are. I mean, I'm a little bit more humane. I use scissors and I just cut them off. Ah, I do that to my sleeves, but <laughs> you do, you we can't, just we can't waste all the fabric. <laughs> I'm waiting for the tank top made of sleeves of other shirts. You know, that's, that's, not a, that's actually not a bad idea, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to try to use the sleeves and turn them into wristbands. Eventually, if you stack enough of them on each other, it'll compress, right? So, hey, man, Ooh, save the planet. Fun. Rah, rah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this Banshee. I I, I think Plug Banshee is such a cool way to, you know, very safe after what Jon Snow did in the first game. But also, yeah. I think if you're like comfortable that you may be a bit of a stronger player, Banshees are so good to get damage done. Because even if someone defends or sets up defensively against Banshees, they can still lose a handful of drones, you know, map control. It can be such a powerful play. So I love it. You're up 1-0. You don't want to die to anything silly. This is the perfect way to do that while also potentially putting yourself in a really good position. Yeah, I really like Banshees defensively. I don't I don't see Terrans get as much damage done as they used to, but I do agree with you that the opportunity is very huge even if there is a defense against it. Like opening with Banshees to be safe, 200 IQ. Then send them to attack once you feel like you could hold it, you know, something like a Roach push. Sending Banshees out immediately at the start of the game, I feel like can be a little bit risky, but the way that way that Future has done it in this game, he waited, he was patient as Hellions, saw everything. There's no roaches. The lair is very fast. The spire is on the way. And at the very least, going into the main, seeing the lair, where it is, he won't find the spire here, but look, as you said, he's going to grab a couple of drones and be able to scout. Yep. And he's denying mining off that gas, which if he's going to go mutilous, that's actually a pretty big deal, not mining gas on one side of your main base. Touche. Yeah, and he's, very good he's not properly put the gases on the natural either and now he sees the spire so yeah these banshees are absolute heroes at the moment seeing absolutely everything getting some kills and they'll get a little bit more in this third base as well because there's only one queen over here Nate, so they can always pick away at the edges get a couple more drones and they're out of there alive yeah bailing speed is gonna start up so getting all of the typical things all the zergy things that you need but hey 
getting that many drone kills, being able to have this setup where he's going to take the third, if he doesn't get pressured on that at all, it's gonna that's gonna really, really be bad for Jon Snow because these Banshees whacking away at the fourth. Queen's repositioned pretty slowly when they're trying to get off creep to deal with this. And the Banshees could always fly away in this situation. But at the very least, the hatchery will be weak for the follow-up attack. And I, I think he might just cancel here. Really good control. Yeah, now there's an army coming through the center. Nate, just look at the supplies. I know. Oh, you want to take the in. other fourth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to take the other fourth, the 25 army supply? You're, you're about to make muters against the marine tank army showing up. Failings, they don't exist right now. You've got 10 lings on the map to morph in. <laughs> better get Oh my god, you're right. Yeah, he can't even make them. He's only got... Yeah, he can only make eight veins. Yeah. So the Banshees, by the way, went back to the fourth. There's no that the top side base is denied yeah. again. The bottom base is also denied. So you got three base Terran versus three base Zerg. I, I've seen I've seen this movie before. It ends with bullets in the skulls of aliens, and it doesn't end it doesn't end well for the aliens. By the way, in case you're wondering, they they need the brains too. Um, uh. So now he's got two tanks backing up a double medevac drop inside the main base. Those evolution chambers are also extremely exposed. Man, this is just, this is actually, I want to say this is more brutal than the first game, because at least the first game is just an all in that build. This game, like, did you just harass him and kill him with harass? Like, Started the fourth no top right now. Started yeah. the fourth again, it just got killed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, he, I think he straight up killed that hatchery. All the building. Well, well, I mean, future right now looking great. No upgrades, so you're now 1 1 against 0 0 forever. Um,. Yeah, th this was just like Gucci going to way too good a position. Jon Snow did not keep his macro up. He didn't control right. Oh my god, the Banes are just running into tank fire and not even committing through. Oh, make it stop, mate. Make it stop. This was a really lost. well played back. Just, just look at the resources lost tab. That, that, Ooh, tells, uh, that what? tells the story of this game. Gucci has lost less than a thousand resources to 3.5k. Yeah, it's just the Hellions, right? It's the Hellions, really. He lost the Reaper as well. <laughs> he lost the Hellions and a Reaper. Eight Hellions, one Reaper, 800 resources. Boom, boom. Yeah. Well, that's um, that's pretty much going to be it. I mean, even if this army gets cleaned up, how many mutilists are going down in this fight? Well, a lot of them. Uh, More Marines actually is going to straight up drop into the main base. There was a few palings rolling in there, so that he might doesn't really done. care yeah. about being cost effective <laughs> anymore. There's yeah. there's four mutas. Are they being transfused? Yes. Are they still going to die? Also, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Future could have made this a little bit cleaner. He lost ten SCVs across the map as well. So in fairness. Some damage was done by Jon Snow. I like that he's trying to give himself some hope because he needs to do stuff like that if he's ever going to win a game from this position. Unfortunately, this time around, he's just a little bit too far behind, no matter what. These muters out of transfusions now, but oh, extra marine showing up is pretty much going to put an end to this anyway. Yeah. GG, future looked freaking great in this series, mate.